We're just finishing up problem 1F on the last video. So let's go ahead and write our two solutions. So order doesn't really matter. I generally like to have my radical second, and that's because I know what's coming, quadratic formula, and it always has the radical second. So when I go to write this first solution, and notice how I didn't write the negative 6 underneath, because you can't subtract 6 from a radical, so you have to write it as two terms. So keep the sign with it, negative 6, and then this one was positive radical 17. So that's your first solution. Your second solution is going to be x equals, this one's negative 6, minus radical 17. So when you go to write your two answers in solution sets, you write negative 6 plus rad 17, comma, negative 6 minus rad 17. So sometimes the solutions aren't all nice and pretty whole numbers. Sometimes they're going to be two terms as you see here, and even fractions sometimes. Okay, so let's review factoring. I put some factoring at the end of your last practice test just to uh, let you know we have factoring coming up. So let's do a little bit of review here. So notice on both of these, the leading coefficient is 1. That means I can go straight to the bubbles. And this just says factor. It doesn't say solve. See how there's no equal sign. So we're just going to um, leave it like that. So now we're looking for factors of 9, 1 and 9, 3 and 3 that add to 6. So I can tell it's going to be 3 and 3. Now I need to decide the signs. So remember, a plus at the end means they'll be the same. And this tells us what they'll both be. So they're both going to be negative, and x minus 3, x minus 3. And we also learned in Chapter 4 that we could write it like that, and that's how we're going to do it in this section because we're going to be um, completing the square. So this is what we called in Chapter 4 a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial because that's going to be our goal when we start the second method of completing the square is we want to make perfect square trinomial. Why? Because all perfect square trinomials have matching factors and then can be written like this because our goal at the end of completing the square is to do the square root property so we need a squared quantity. So sometimes you can't tell by looking I could tell that this was going to be, but you can't tell until you get to this step. If these match, then we know it's a perfect square trinomial. So let's see if this one is as well. So signs are the same. Again, this time they're both going to be positive. So x plus x plus. And we're looking for factors of 64 that add to 16. So 1 and 64, no. 2 and 32, no. 3 doesn't, oh, 3 does go into that. Got the calculator this time. So 64 divided by 3 is, oh, 3 doesn't go into that. Oh, because it adds to 10. I don't know why I thought that was 12. 4 goes in 16 times. So do any of these add to 16 yet? No, that adds to 20, that adds to 34, that adds to 65. 5 doesn't go into it, 6 doesn't, 7 doesn't, 8 does. Boom, there's our factors, 8 plus 8, 16. So is this a perfect square trinomial? Yes, it is, because the two factors match. So that's a perfect square trinomial. And so is this. And like I said, you don't have to notice at the beginning. You'll just see when you do your two factors that they match, and then you'll know it is. Okay, okay let's go ahead and go to page two. So now we're going to learn how to make perfect square trinomials. 
So in order for something to be a perfect square trinomial, get up here. Determine the value of n that makes a polynomial a perfect square trinomial. Then factor the expression. So what we have to do is half of b squared. So let's write that up here. To make a perfect square trinomial, we comma we add one half of b squared so does everybody remember the ax squared plus bx plus c you're going to become very friendly with that in the next section because we're going to be um, solving with the quadratic formula. So you have to know what a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient of the x squared, b is the coefficient of the x, c is the constant. So we're taking the x term, we're doing half of it, and then we're squaring whatever that answer is. And that's how we make a perfect square trinomial. So you can see this one, b is 10, so I do half a 10, which is 5, and then I square 5. So the number I need to add, the n, is 25. And watch what happens. Sign's the same. They're both positive. What are factors of 25 that add to 10? 5 and 5. x plus 5 squared. Boom. Perfect square trinomial. So by adding this constant on, half of whatever b is, and then squaring it, so half of 10 is 5, squared is 25. We turn that into a perfect square trinomial, which we need for completing the square, which is coming up. So let's practice on some. Oh, do you know what? I wanted you to highlight some problems from the first page. So before we get too far, let's go back to the first page, because. I pulled out the practice test and I thought we should highlight. So we have a problem like mm, this one. Oh, actually it has parentheses. So let's pick this one instead. And we have a problem like this one on the test. Whoops. I'm not all the way in the picture. So C and D so far are highlighted. And then we have a problem where it's not a perfect square. So this one. So C, D, and F are all three test questions. So that will remind you to go back and look at those before you take your next test or when you're studying for it. Okay, so everybody has C, D, and F highlighted. Okay, so back to this. Determine the value of N that makes these a perfect square trinomial. So the first thing I do is because I want to write, remember the formula, I write half of B squared. So that way every time I write the formula, I have it memorized by the end of the exercise. So half, and what is b? Negative 12. And then I need to square it. So what's half of negative 12? Negative 6. And when I square it, I get 36. So that's a formula you just have to memorize. And let's go up and highlight this to remind you that you have to memorize anytime you're completing the square. You're trying to make a perfect square trinomial. And you'll do this a ton in the next class because you're going to be finding like the center of a ellipse, the center of a circle. And so in order to do that, you have to make perfect square trinomials because um, you have a whole chapter on conics in the next class. So that'll be an important formula.
So we just figured out that n was 36 because n is the number that you need to add to make it a perfect square. So up here we'll write 36. Then it says factor the expression. So let's write our new expression x squared minus 12x plus 36 and factor. And if we've done the problem correctly, those factors should match. So this says they're going to be the same. This says they're both negative. So we can put in x minus, x minus, factor the 36 that add to 12 are going to be 6 and 6, right? And there you have it. That's going to lead us to x minus 6 squared. And I know you might be saying, do we have to write it like that? Yes. For completing the square, you need to write it like this because you have to be able to do the square root property. And so in order to do the square root property, you need a squared underneath. Okay. So let's do one more and then I'll let you guys try a couple. Actually, why don't you go ahead and try B right now? Because the next two are a little bit harder. So shut off your video, try B on your own, find in, find the factored form, and then turn it back on and we'll check. Okay, so half of b squared is going to be half of, here's my b, whatever's in front of the x term, negative 10, and then square it. Well, half of negative 10 is negative 5 squared, which is 25. So there's my n. Now they're asking us to factor the new polynomial. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. So again, we have same, both negative. So we do x minus, x minus, factors of 25 that add to 10, 5 and 5. And yes, we are going to have some coming up later that don't have leading coefficient 1, but right now they do. So that's why we can go straight to the bubbles on all of these so far. And that's going to lead us to x minus 5 squared. So we made it a perfect square trinomial, so we could write it like that. Okay, did everybody get that right? Yeah. Okay, so it gets a little bit trickier. This is where you need your calculator, so make sure you have your calculator by your side. So you're going to need the calculator to do some of these that aren't so easy to do in your head. So I'm going to write the formula so I don't forget it. Half of b squared. So that would be half of b is 7 squared. And you're probably like, ooh, yuck. This is why we have the calculator. The calculator does it all. So parentheses, whoop, turn the calculator on. So parentheses 1, fraction bar 2, times 7. Close your parentheses. And you do want to use the fraction bar because you want your answer to be a fraction. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So then hit your x squared button. So look at this looks exactly like my problem, right? Parentheses 1 half times 7 quantity squared. Hit enter and it gives me 12 and 1 fourth. Well, I don't want a mixed number. So do you guys remember this little key right here? See what it says above? Change a mixed number to a fraction. Since it's above, we have to hit second and that key. Enter. So 49 fourths. So that's going to be our n. And the reason we want it written like that is because we're going to be taking the square root on the next problem. And in order to take the square root, we need it as a fraction. Square root of 49, 7. Square root of 4, 2. So that's why we write it as an uh, improper fraction rather than as a decimal. So let's write our new problem and then we'll finish it 
on the next video.